Hi, I'm Eric Olison, and I'm the owner of O&H Danish Bakery. Our bakery started in 1949 by my grandfather. I'm a third generation owner now, and I, I've got a son and, and, and a son-in-law who work with me in the business, and that's the fourth generation, and, and the fifth generation is our grandchildren that uh, we love, and, and, uh, and, and they love Kringle. Danish baking is, is oftentimes a lot of butter, a lot of eggs, a lot of milk. It's all those dairy products that are very, very indigenous to Racine, Wisconsin, actually. And um, so that's what uh, Wienerbrot or Vienna bread is this very rich dough made with eggs and milk, and, and then we roll in the butter between the, uh, the dough. So uh, we get this, this layering process, and that's what I have right in front of me here, is um, we have this layering of, of dough and butter and dough and butter. So I'll point with the knife because it's easier than my finger, but you can see it first with the dough, then the butter, and it just keeps repeating. So we have 18 layers in our case. O&H does it with 18 layers. So then we roll the dough some more on the second day. We do some things to it, but essentially we're, we're rolling it down thinner, but not too thin because we want to take it very thin on the third day. So then the second day we roll it, and, um, and again we refrigerate it overnight because we're not gonna bake this. This is for the purposes of showing you. I'm just gonna cut one. I can only do this because it's recently out of the refrigerator. So, now we have a cross section of 18 layers of butter on the top and the bottom. And, um, and actually right here we have the overlap of the, uh, the that strip of dough that has been enveloping the uh, fillings inside. This particular Kringle is uh, it's cherry and cream cheese and cranberries. And we call this a Wisconsin Kringle because it has cherries from Dark County, it's got uh, uh, cranberries from the Wisconsin Rapids area, and it's got cream cheese from North of Milwaukee, West Bend area. So we make this, uh, these Kringle this three day, this is the third day where we put these fillings in and then we prepare the uh, Kringle for the oven. We let it bake for about 22 minutes and, um, and it puffs up nice and beautiful and, and then it, it cools down and settles down into a, a much uh, 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 flatter product and then we put an icing on top. So we've got this same Kringle here and open that up. Now our Kringle we put this layer of plastic on top. And the reason we do that is so that when you slide that Kringle out of the bag, that the icing comes with it. Because sometimes, um, it's been our own personal experience where sometimes the icing will stick to this bag, you pull it out and some of the icing's still in the bag. And I, you know, it's, it kind of deflates the experience a little bit. So in this case, we've got um, our Kringle that uh, has taken three days to make. And our goal at ONH is always a, a light, tender, flaky pastry. So you know, we're looking for not a real high puffy pastry like a croissant, which is it's just a wonderful pastry in itself, but it's, it's not as sweet as a Kringle dough, and it's not, uh, it's not as moist as a Kringle dough. So, um, so we have this, uh, this flakiness above and below the filling, and, and then the wonderful filling distributed throughout. So we just, and then the icing on top. And you know, it's just, you asked me earlier, you know, what's the right size of a Kringle slice? I guess you just saw what I thought was the right size of a Kringle slice. But um, you know, it's, um, some people are gonna make it twice this size, some people are gonna make it half this size. That's a beautiful thing. The, so the first Kringle was made into a pretzel shape. And what the Racine bakers, or the bakery owners of Racine, uh, recognized many years ago, back in the 1940s and 1950s, was that when they would share the Kringle, the last pieces eaten were those overlapping parts. So they came up with the idea, well, let's just eliminate the overlapping parts. So instead of making our pretzel shape, we're going to make the oval shape. The origins of the oval shaped Kringle are from Racine, Wisconsin. The origins of Kringle are from Denmark. There's, the only difference is the shape. And then by, by eliminating the overlapping of all of the, and making a pretzel shape out of this strip of dough, was it allowed them to, to put additional flavors together. Because that's the other thing that Racine bakery owners recognize is that 
people liked different flavors. They were kind of just tired of just getting almond all the time, and they, uh, they found that this nut that's available in the United States, pecans, was a very, very popular nut. So they started making a pecan kringle, and instead of combining it with almond, which had been done on various coffee cakes, they made their own filling for the pecan, which is brown sugars and cinnamon and, and all of it. It's kind of a caramely kind of a paste, and it's, it's really delicious with pecans. Even um, with a three-day process and being a light, tender, flaky pastry, um, it mail orders really, really well. So we have countless people that maybe have never even been to Racine, Wisconsin, but they found us and have learned about us, whether it's through friends or whether it's just poking around on the internet, um, and, uh, or blogs like yourself and, uh, and different, uh, uh, different publications and shows that uh, Kringle have been featured on. So uh, Kringle has become very popular for mail order, and, uh, and I encourage people to give it a try, um, especially as a gift, because it's unique, it's fun, it's got a story. Uh, it, it, it's something that uh, when people receive a Kringle, for the first time especially, and they, they have some, they remember who gave it to them. They remember them, and, and it's, it's, it's almost so powerful, it's amazing.